Denver's number one hit music station is 95.7 The Party is Deuce. I have a gigantic grin on my face because we have a very special guest in the building, Nina Nesbitt. Thank you so much for taking the time to hang out with us today. Hi. Thanks for having me. <laughs> so is this your first time in Colorado? It is, yeah. What's your impression so far? Um, lots of mountains. Yeah. Um, lots of trees and very peaceful. I like it. Very serene. I was in Boulder this morning. Oh, Having a shower, which was great. Did you pick? Did you, did they're you, hard to come by. Yeah. <laughs> did you pick um, up a pair of Birkenstocks and? No, my mum would have loved that because she loves them. But um, <laughs> I, I had a little wander around. Okay. Nice. Got my nails done. Well, welcome. Thanks. Um, I'm sure you've gotten a lot of unsolicited advice about being in Colorado, but when you perform tonight, make sure you're nice and hydrated. Everyone says that um, it's hard to breathe here. Yeah. I haven't noticed it yet. Good. Should I be noticing it? Yeah. About the third song in. Really? That's when it'll kick in tonight. Most most performers are like, they warn me about it, and then third song, and it's like, yep, they're right. Oh, really? Yeah. Luckily, I don't dance, so I'll just be <laughs> chilling. <laughs> but thanks for the heads up. Yes. Now, you're uh, you're Scottish. Mm-hmm. I took one of those DNA tests, you know, you sent on the internet. Yeah. And I found out that I am 12.4%. So if I want to be authentically Scottish... Mm-hmm. Give me some advice as an American without a cultural identity. Um, well, <laughs> we're almost the same percent Scottish. All right. Um, so you did it too. I'm 25 percent Scottish. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we could be cousins. We could be cousins. That'd be awesome. Are you of. Irish as well? Yes. We were definitely cousins. <laughs> oh, sweet. 25 percent Scottish, 25 percent Irish. Somebody's getting backstage the tonight at the show. Just, yeah. Right. So you need to get a kilt first. <laughs> okay. Bit of haggis. I was wondering um, about the haggis. Beer. Yeah. Just drink in general, whiskey. Um, and what else? Uh, the accent. You've got to get the accent going. That's going to be tough. You can try it. I'll have on. to work on that. <laughs> I don't want to be disrespectful because there's nothing worse than, and I'm sure you've experienced this with other radio idiots, where they try to mimic the accent. Yeah. So, <laughs> some of them are good, but... Some you kind of just go, yeah, okay, keep trying. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight you're performing at the Bluebird Theater. Yes. It's a really intimate uh, setting. Uh, the fans are really excited. We have some fans in the studio today okay. that, that actually won our VIP contest just to, just to meet you. Very cool. I, I would like for you to speak to me for a few minutes about the collaboration you're doing with Sasha Sloan and, and Charlotte Lawrence. Mm-hmm. What's the nature of that? Is it is it a collaboration, a writing collaboration, or are you guys forming a group? How does, how does how, What is the dynamic there? Um, yeah, it was a writing collaboration. So Spotify basically have picked us three as like three independent artists that they want to break in the US this year, which is hilarious. And um, I somehow ended up as one of them. And they put us in a room. They were like, we want you to write a song together and we want to do a, our first release as a collaboration thing. So we had six hours in a room because wow. they're from LA and I'm not so I was in LA for the day so we had six hours to like get in a room meet each other write a song and then leave and it all happened did you have instant chemistry or does it take a minute to develop that or we actually did yeah but we all like as a writer like I when I'm not doing this like I'm writing every day so I'm quite used to getting in a studio with a stranger and just pouring my life out to them so we all you know had experience with doing that so it was okay I don't want to be that guy that asks about your process. Mm-hmm. And with that said, I'm going to ask you about your process right. because I'm very <laughs> curious about creative specifically, you know, I'm, I'm a big stand-up comedian fan and it's interesting to hear like when, when ideas come to fruition and I imagine mm-hmm. it's similar with songwriters. Do you have a prescribed time every day? Like here's my writing time or is it more when inspiration hits me a flood of ideas? You know, what kind of is, how do you write? Um, I don't really have a formula as such. I just I don't know. Sometimes I have like two different styles of writing because I write for other people sometimes. Right. I did a lot of that before getting music out again. So if I'm doing that, I'll just go into a room and I'm thinking like, I'm kind of thinking business wise because I'm kind of thinking like that's, that's like a job mm-hmm. and like I enjoy doing that and I'm like, right, how can I write the biggest pop song, you know, and just write something that's catchy and that maybe like, a few people could cut instead of just one. Yeah. But then when it's me writing for my album, that's like my passion project and I have a home studio in my bedroom and I'll just sit there and I do the production there and then it's all very like, um, what's the word? Internal. Okay. Like that's like a little project. Is it me. is it more difficult to write for yourself? Yeah. 
so difficult yeah. like I have to write like 30 songs to find one that I actually like for me I don't know why I think for this album especially every song's really personal and has like it's like a journey and I don't know it was quite hard to because it's all lyric led as well like every song is all about the lyric yeah so yeah I would say actually somebody special's like the least lyrical song if you know what I mean um, What's that that pop anthem that you? Yeah, it's like it's a it's a pop song. It's yeah. like the poppiest moment, and I like I still think the lyrics are personal, but the rest of the album's like definitely very lyrically led. So it takes a while to like find one that you like. Uh, I saw an interview a couple of days ago from Dua Lipa, one of our favorites, mm-hmm. and she talked about the difficulty women have being taken seriously in the music industry. Um, just to paraphrase her, she she kind of said that you know men get a pass. The idea is that men typically write the, for the at least the perception is men write for themselves, yeah. and women not so much. Have you found that to be the case? Have you found uh, barriers being a woman in the industry or or unfair uh, boundaries that have been placed on your career? Yeah, I think. Um, not so much when I was younger, like I didn't really notice it, but then now I look back and it's like people were like, oh no, like sh- her label's obviously like done this whole thing and like she doesn't write her own songs cause she's right. She's co-writing. And it's like, when I go into a co-writing session, I'm like, this is the idea. These are the melodies. These are the lyrics. Like the thing I like collaborating on is chords. So that's why I like collaborating, but to there is this weird stigma with female pop writers, I think, like because of girls doing pop music, they think, oh, it can't all be them. Right. So I've definitely, as a writer, experienced it more where I'll go into a session and I'll pick up an instrument and like the producer will be surprised. And it's like, why, why are you surprised that? I'm playing an instrument. It's almost condescending, though. I mean, you're yeah. you've been doing this for a long time, and you're you're accomplished. And I think it's just like an internal thing that society's told us. Like yeah. it's not like people going out their way to be bad. It's right. like I don't know. I think we just have to keep changing the way that people think about things. Do you feel like there's been some progress made since you began your career? Definitely. I think getting cuts for other artists really helped me gain like credibility as a yeah. writer. Like going into a room, people now are like oh, like, I love your stuff, like, let's do something instead of, oh, so this is how the verse is going to go, and this is, and I'm like, no, no, this is what's happening. So you have to be quite assertive when you go into the room, and I think often people can go, oh, she's bossy, or she's a diva, but it's like, no, like, you need need to know what you want, and you need to know what your vision is, so, Yeah. yeah, just just go in and do your thing. Nina Nesbitt performing tonight, The Bluebird, she's hanging out at 95.7 The Party. I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you about Timmy. Oh. Timmy is her Pomeranian. Yeah. I miss him so much. He's at home with mom? <laughs> He's at home, yeah. How do you do that? Do you FaceTime Timmy? I FaceTime him every morning and yeah. speak to him in hope that he'll remember me when Does I Does he home. react though? I mean, do, do, can you see the glint in his eyes of there's mom? His, his ears perk up, yeah. but I think it's just, he's like, what's that sound? So <laughs> I don't think he remembers. But does that. he run to the phone or the tablet? No. No? No. Oh. He's all about smell. Okay. So. You got to send a t-shirt home or something. Yeah, I did. I, I left one in the house that you would have but okay. he's now moved to my mum's so I have I, to wait and see when I get home I mean of all your like professional accomplishments which are very admirable I admire your ability <laughs> to leave your fur baby for an extended period Honestly, of time I, I wasn't gonna get a dog but then I thought I've never been away for more than three weeks at a time so that's okay like my mum can have him for three weeks does he have his own Instagram page yeah does he and now I'm away for three months <laughs> My mum's not overly happy with me. <laughs> well, Nina, but thank you so much for taking the time to, to, to hang you. out with us today. We're really excited about the trajectory of your career. Um, we're going to play some somebody special Thanks. right now. Um, but I also wanted to give the opportunity for our, our audience here to ask you any questions. Mm-hmm. Do you guys have any questions? Um, your Life in Color EP was all based off of letters that San, that um, fans sent in to you. Mm-hmm. Is there any kind of songs that are also kind of inspired by other stories you've heard on your album? Um, a song called The Best You Had was actually written about a friend's situation and not mine. Um, I've drawn quite a lot from friends' stories. Mm-hmm. Uh, another one called Loyal to Me as well, that's about a friend's story. So I think like people around me definitely inspire me a lot. But um, that EP was really cool because I learned so much about people through that. Like I got like hundreds of stories sent in and a lot of them were really sad as well. Mm. I was like, it kind of reminded me that 
you know, you like you see these social media accounts and these people look really happy and and then when they send you the story, you're like, oh wow, like everyone's got their own stuff going on. So it was quite, quite like an emotional experience, but really good, enlightening. <laughs>